in Mark chapter number 4 in verse 35 and it says and the same day when the evening was come he saith unto them let us pass over unto the other side and when they had sent away the multitude they took him Jesus is who they're talking about even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said one unto another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him Father in heaven, Lord, I do thank you for this privilege to be here tonight. What a blessing, Lord, to have a church like this to go to, to have folks like this to come. Lord, it is an honor and a privilege. Lord, I pray that you would help me tonight. Say something to encourage your people. God bless. Bless our pastor. Bless Brother Moore and all of those that are involved in what's happening over there in Christ for the Caribbean. Lord, help. Father, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> you know, in this story, you know, it's evident he's talking about this storm. And one thing I want to tell you that's not even a, uh, really about my message is that a lot of times in storms we forget. Because if you would see in this scripture, in verse 36, he said for them to get into the ship. And he said there were other little ships. Always remember you're not the only one facing adversity. Right. You're not the only one. You know, you say, well, you know, a lot of people think, well, I'd get saved, but that life's too hard. No, it's the easiest life. Right. Right. You know, because you have somebody to help you. Right. But I want you to look with me in verse 36, and I want to take a phrase that is in this verse and preach on it. The second part of that verse says, They took him even as he was. And that's what I want to preach on taking Jesus the way he is a lot of people most people want to go to heaven and they want Jesus on their terms but you can't have him like that you can't have Jesus on your own terms you'll take him as he is or you won't take him at all he won't play second fiddle to nobody he will be in charge or he won't be at all and you know it's kind of like uh, you know you see young couples <clears throat> they they start dating and they're going to find out that there's that person that they're dating they're not perfect and they say well I can change them probably not probably not it takes a long time <laughs> you, you have to be tough to change people but I find here if you're going to have anything to do with him you're going to have to take him now how, how are you going to have to take him first of all you're going to have to take him as your master because look what he said he, he said, first thing he says is, let us pass over on the other side. He was telling them what to do. Now, the word master, it means a man that rules, or it means the owner. And so what God is telling you is, I'm going to be owner. I'm going to be the one. Now, to own something means you have had to have paid for it. And you know, Jesus said that he paid for the church with his own blood. That's why he has the right to tell you what to do. We're living in a society where nobody wants no, they don't want, you know, I, I, I'll take all you got to give me, but don't tell me that I've got any responsibility. That's why people shack up, you know. I, I'll just be honest, they don't want no responsibility of a lifetime commitment. I want to say this, that's not going to work. Matter of fact, that's a sinful way of living. But I want to say this, first of all, He's going to tell you what to do if you trust Him as your Savior and you've took His blood atonement. He has a right to tell you what to do. You know, because He paid for you. The Bible says, for you are bought with a price in 1 Corinthians. 
You know what God says? I'm taking over your life for your benefit. Do you know why God wants to run your life? Because you don't know how to. I don't know how to run my life, Brother Ray. I need somebody to tell me what to do. We think of a master as someone who's out there cracking the whip. No, sir, I'm telling you, he's the one that you love him to be your master. You know, we want today to be able to go to heaven without having Christ as our Savior and Lord. He's the one who paid for your life to be your master. But he's one that plans your life out. Do you know what? God has something especially for you to do. There's something that you can do. There's someone you can reach that nobody else can reach. You know why? Because God has a plan. He don't have a plan for everybody specifically that you're going to be. He just don't make out. Like when you drive up through here, all these houses look the same. They just look the same. Y'all got quiet because you live here. <laughs> but they live, they just look the same. God does not want you to be like the guy sitting next to you. He wants you because he has a specific plan for your life. He has a specific job for you to do. Everybody can't be. You know what I believe? That Brother Doug Foster is divinely placed in this as pastor. Why? That's the plan for his life by God. Amen. 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 Those of you that sing, those of you that play instruments, God has planned that in your life. He's given you that talent. Amen. Amen. God has done that. Those of you like, you know, like Brother Ray can do anything around here, that's his plan. Why? Because God, God didn't want him to do whatever, pastor. I, I don't know why that is. All I know is that's how it is, and it's God's business. Right. Let me say this. Thirdly of all, in him being the, pa the master, we see that he has power over our life. Yep, sure. Huh? He said in Acts chapter 1, talking about the Holy Ghost, he said, but when, the, when you, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You know why I've, I've witnessed to people, Brother Josh, and you know what they've told me? I've tried that church. It just don't work. You know why? It ain't church that you need. It, it ain't a relationship with the pastor you need. It's a relationship with Christ you need. It's someone higher than that. You need the Holy Ghost. You know, I thought this stuff was crazy when I was a kid. Going to church, it's just crazy. Why would you want to waste your Sundays going to church? You know why? I hadn't had the power. See, the Holy Ghost came in and it all started getting clear to me that this right here, what's going on here today, is more important than what's going on down in Frankfurt at the Capitol. It's more important what's going on at the courthouse over in, in Florence. It's more important than what's going on at the courthouse over in Cincinnati. Why? Because Jesus is coming back for the church and he is empowering. I'm telling you, the reason it is as good as it is is because the church is still here. Because God has put a little light in every one of us to shine in this lost and dark world. And I'm trying to tell you tonight, my friend, it's the power that is in us that's the Holy Ghost that gives us to see. Uh, we were talking and I had to tell my family, please be quiet. I don't, don't get me discouraged on the way to church when they started talking about the outcome of the election you know but right in front of our very eyes God is letting us see this book being unfolded no other generation brother Ed has had the privilege to see you say this is horrible this is great because just one step around the corner, Jesus could be there. And the world don't have the power to see what's happening. But I see it. Uh, every step. All of this craziness that's going on. All of the homosexual movement. That don't shock me none. I've been reading about this for 40 years. But it's coming more and more and more and more. And it's going to become more. It's going to become more prevalent. Why? Because this book that I have been empowered to understand what's going to happen. Amen. Do you know, for lack of better words, when Jesus comes and the tribulation is literally going to be hell on earth. 
But do you think that it's just going to go from being like this to that? No. It's going to gradually, gradually get worse. Why do you believe that, preacher? Because I have read this book, and by the power that's in me, the Holy Ghost has empowered me to see that there's a time. Did you know in the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, that John the Baptist come on the scene, and he, God hasn't spoken one syllable to nobody for 400 years. And here's what John said. He said, Who hath warned you to flee the wrath of God? You know what he was telling them 2,000 years ago? The first thing that God had to say, he didn't say, Hey, I really feel good about you. I didn't, I, he didn't say, Let me tell you how to become a better Ray Roberts. He didn't say that. He said to those Pharisees, Who has warned you to flee? He said, go get fruit, meats for fruit for repentance. He it empowers us to see what's going on. You know, you know why that we got so many drug addicts? They can't deal with what's going on. They're, they're trying to escape reality through drugs and all kinds of, uh, of sinful activity, uh, alcohol and whatever you, you know, they, they might, uh, it might be pleasure, you know, just uh, vacationing all the time, just riding around. I, I don't know what their problem is, but I know this. They're trying to escape reality and their only escape for reality is Jesus. There's only one answer for every problem in America. Jesus. Now, let me say this second of all. You'll have to take him when the multitudes leave. Did you see what happened here? He said, and when they had sent away the multitudes. Now, in the physical here, the disciples are telling them, we're pushing offshore here, you've got to leave. But in the spiritual term, you don't have to tell them that. You want to know how to get rid of your lost friends? Get saved. That's all you'll have to do. You won't have to put a sign on your back, what would Jesus do? You won't have to do that. You go in and say in the, in the lunchroom and say, you know what, last night at the church I got saved. They say, adios amigo, don't know you no more. Yeah. Hmm? You say, well, I never done nothing to them. Oh, yes, you did. You stepped off onto another side. You joined the minority. Uh, we're a minority you understand that Christians are a minority here uh, it's, it's not the Japanese or whoever it's not them it's the Christians now why does the multitude go away because of him they don't want to take him the way he is you know why because he's going to be poking into your life Mm. They don't want somebody to tell them, you know what you're doing's wrong. Uh, right. They don't want the, they want they want a Jesus that says it's all right to live in sin. Yeah. It's all right to to just uh, have a few beers on the weekend. It's all right. No, it ain't all right. Uh, it ain't all right to do that. Well, it's quiet in here. <laughs> Let me say this. He's the one. You know the Bible says no man can serve two masters. Right. You, know that, you know why? They, they want to be able to have all of the pleasures of the world, go where they want to go, do what they want to do, and end up in heaven. It ain't going to work that way. That's the multitude that goes away. Uh, see, they, they go away because life gets too hard. See, they don't realize what I just told you. One of the greatest truths in humanity is that everybody goes through hard times. Sure. I don't care who you are. Sure. I don't care if you're Donald Trump. You're not on trial, are you? He is. Yeah. Now, I know it's a big joke to him, but it's, he's still on trial. Do you know that there's people out there got tons of money and they have no peace? Do you know tonight that the greatest blessing you have, you can go home, say your prayers, get in bed, and have peace that passes no understanding, and you know what? They can't do it. They're out there drinking themselves to sleep at night, taking pills to go to sleep at night. Why? Because their life is hard. Not our, the way of a transgressor is hard. Not the way of a Christian. We make it hard because we want to fit in. You can't fit in. 
It's like them little, them little things we used to give our kids, a little, little box with holes in it and they had things you'd stick. You know, you can't put the round thing in the square hole. It won't fit. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to fit in. We're trying to be like the world, but I'm trying to tell you that ain't going to happen. Why? Because that's when life gets hard. Right. See, they went away because life got hard. But what they fail to see is it's hard out there without. Wouldn't you have, Brother Ryan, I'd hate to be out there in their condition. Huh? I'd hate to be out there and not have Jesus. I'd hate to be out there and not have nobody. I, uh, I'd hate to have my daughter, granddaughter down at the, at the mercy room and not know I couldn't call out on my Savior to hear my prayers. I wouldn't have no hope. I wouldn't have no rest. I'd be turning to alcohol like them. You know why? Because we are the most blessed. Don't ever forget it. When you start having trouble, you ain't in the boat by yourself. There's thousands of people out there going through worse than you're going through. Huh? You think you got it hard? There's people in the hospital right now dying. They're dying. Sure. Nursing homes. This is a great life. Amen. Huh? See, they go away because of the condition of their heart. Hmm? Amen. Their heart's wicked. They like wicked things. You know, we love darkness. Jesus said, I come unto my own, my own receive me not, because they love darkness rather than light. You know, they don't like it. You know, it's funny that everybody can lie, but Jesus, Jesus won't lie. huh? You know what, Brother Brian, if there's something wrong with you and you ask him, he'll tell you. You might ask somebody, your friend, you'll say, what do you think about this? And they say, well, that's be all right. Jesus said, no, pal, that ain't all right. That's why they don't like him, because their heart is wicked. They, they want somebody who agrees with their, their garbage and all the stuff that they're doing. And I want to try to tell you the multitude is going away and <clears throat> they're going away because of the conditions of their heart is darkened by their sin. They like it. You know, sinners like it. They say, well, I've heard people say, well, I don't believe, I don't believe they're having fun. They're having tons of fun, friend. Right. Hmm? Amen. Amen. They're having tons of fun for a season. But then the season will be over. Right. See, they're doing that, and the multitude's going away. But in verse 37, you'll have to take him when life becomes miserable. Now, I wouldn't imagine them fellows are bailing that water out of that ship. They wouldn't say, praise God, this is wonderful. I'm really enjoying myself. Well, I'll be honest with you, when I run over them post hole diggers, I didn't, I didn't like it. If you know what they are, maybe you don't know what they are. <laughs> hey, you, you, you think people, Brother Brian, their people don't know what they are. I've met people who didn't know how to use them. Y'all looking at me strange. Uh, when life becomes miserable, do you know, do you know what these fellows had? They, they don't like it because there's troubles in life. See, they don't want this life because there's troubles. Amen. But see, the devil's got them blinded yeah. because there are troubles anyway. You didn't have troubles when you was lost. I did. Didn't you? I had troubles. Plenty of troubles. Amen. You know? There was sickness, sorrows. There were storms. Did you see what? Did you see the, the great thing here? The only people that really, only reason the, the people got help wasn't because of the little ships. It was because of the ship. Yeah. Huh? Right. Yeah. They got help. You know the world's being helped by our being here. Even if we don't talk to them. It's better for them that we're here, but it's worse for us. See, because the, you, you've got to look past this one ship in this storm and all these disciples are, are bailing water out and out in the sea is a bunch of other little ships and they're doing the same thing. But they don't have Jesus on board. Thank God I got Jesus on board. I'm not out there with the other little ships bailing water on my own in my troubles. Uh, do you know... Life's miserable not only because of troubles, but because... See, there's a difference between a trouble and trials. A trouble, you know, is just something that just randomly happens. But a trial is something that stays for an extended period of time. Amen. Uh, you know, the Bible says, uh, talks about the trial of your faith being more precious than gold. 
You know, you know what he said there? He didn't say you was on trial. He said your faith was on trial. He said the trial of your faith. Right. Where are you going to go? What are you going to, who are you going to turn to? The trial of your faith being much more precious than gold. So I'm trying to tell you today, in all the trials of life, when you have not just a trouble, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience that lasts and it lasts and you say, it can't get no worse, and before you know it, it gets worse, that's why these people bail out. Why? That's why they go away, because they think that if they'll bail out, the devil will leave them alone, and he'll do it. He'll leave them alone, because he's already got them anyway. So I'm trying to tell you, when life gets miserable, just keep on smiling because we're getting near the shore. We're getting closer to home. We're, we're, our, our journey's almost over. Do you know what? Before this is over, you know what they're going to do? It's going to be smooth sailing right on over to the other side. And that's exactly what we're doing, making a smooth sail right on to the other side. You know what? Life's miserable because of the tempter. Now, I don't care how many times you get saved, even though I know you can only get saved once. Right. <laughs> the tempter always comes because you still have the flesh to deal with. It had been a great thing, Brother Ray, if I'd have got saved and the flesh would have left and I, would have, I, could, I didn't have this guy right here. You, you know, you, you, don't, you don't really get in my way none. But this guy right here, he gets in my way every day. Amen. Huh? He hinders me. This guy does. He hinders me every day. He said, how does he hinder you? You name it. Reading my Bible. Hmm? I could watch TV 20 hours. I don't, but I say I could. And never need a nap. Three verses. <laughs> you like that? Huh? That's the truth. Huh? It ain't got nothing to do with being fat. It's just got to do with reading the Bible. <laughs> Even though I am, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, just uh, <laughs> the tempter comes and he's always telling you, that, you know, you don't really have to do it like that. Don't do it like that. God, God don't care. He won't, he don't, he, you know, it's because of him. He, he puts all this stuff in my way and sometimes I'm a sucker for it. And you are too, if you'd be honest. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you fall prey just like Adam and Eve did. Amen. This flesh is no good. Amen. Huh? Your flesh will tell you stuff about people you don't even know. Y'all looking at me like I'm, I, I, I'm just telling you. Y'all ain't, y'all just, we're all here common. We all got all this flesh to deal with uh, you know he put stuff in your way I don't care what it is it can be things it, it can be whatever just anything whatever your weakness is it might be pride uh, you know I've seen people seven, women 70 years old with purple hair I'm thinking come on man please give it up that's weird I think purple hair, Brother Peter, is weird anyway. But if you're 75, time to cut her down. Huh? I'm just saying, you know, the devil just, he just got these people, I mean, he's just, he just setting the line on them, man. He just got them hooked right in the mouth. They're, they're just saying, I'm cool. Huh? They get a tattoo of an eagle when they're 16. By the time they're 70, that thing looks like a crow. It's just the way it is. I didn't make the rules. I'm just telling you how it is. You know, the the tempter. He's he 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 don't bother you. He don't really. He don't bother y'all. Act like he never comes to your house. That's I guess he spent all week down at my house. But he comes, and I mean he's a rascal. I heard Brother Earl Hughes said a great statement one time. He said the devil left. He said, but he came back. <laughs> yeah ain't that, ain't that the way it is look in verse 38 <clears throat> and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep you know you'll have to take him when it appears that Jesus is missing 
You ever went through them times? You go to pray, yeah. read your Bible, or you're going through a problem, and God just seems to be asleep. Right. Now, He's not. But sometimes, it's like he gives you the cold shoulder. Sure. Now, I'm, I don't know for sure why he does this all the time because his ways are past me finding out. But I think sometimes, the more he does us that way, the hungrier we get to talk to him. Right. Mm. You know. Uh, see, when there's silence from heaven, God don't say nothing. I have thought, Brother Ed, about those 400 years. Could you imagine being on planet Earth 400 years and nobody heard anything from God? Yeah. No wonder those people were in, stooped in the religious stuff that they were in. Yeah. Could you imagine? Could you imagine going year after year after year and God don't never say anything to you? You come to church and your preacher gets up and he just preaches and sweats and does everything that he does and it does not even speak to your heart. And there's silence for you. That's horrible. It's horrible to not able to feel him. I don't want to be so cold that I can't feel him. Huh? Then it appears like there's nothing spiritual happening in your life. You know, you read this book and it's just black words on white paper. It's like reading a, whatever kind of book you enjoy to read, whether it be a drama or whatever. I don't know. Amen. And it don't do anything. You come to church... And there's nothing spiritual for you. I want to tell you something. I'd rather go without food longer than without feeling something from my Savior. Amen. I'm trying to tell you when it seems that Jesus is nowhere around. Yeah. I'd hate to go to these churches and they call it worship service. And they don't say nothing. They have people lead in silent prayer. I'm like, what? I don't get it. Yeah. Amen. I, don't, I don't get it. How do you lead in silent prayer? <laughs> I mean, serious? What that is, is nothing spiritual is going to happen here today. They say, come and worship with you. I said, why? You ain't going to say nothing anyway. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Seriously. See, what makes the, something spiritual happen is when somebody over here gets excited, somebody here gets excited, and before you know it, everybody's excited. Why? Because a Holy Ghost with His Spirit has come down amongst us. That's what makes a Christian's life worth living. It's not all the junk out there. It's not all, it's not all the stuff that you can appropriate in life. It's having a relationship where you talk to God and God speaks to you. Uh, see, could you imagine being out on this lake? Now, I don't know if you've ever been out on a lake. And you're rowing. Wind's blowing. You're dipping, and you're staying in the same place. There's no progress. That's horrible. Not to have any progress in your life just to stay the same. Are you content to be that way? Are you content to just stay the way you are? You don't want to move farther. I want to go farther. Uh, really? <laughs> really? Listen to this. We'll be done here shortly. Look, if, if, you, if you will take Him as He is, you know what you'll be blessed to do? See His miracles. Huh? That's what happened. Because they were in the boat, they got in the boat, they did what the Master said, they, they, they traveled in the miserable conditions that they traveled in, and they said, where's Jesus? Jesus got up, and next thing you know, He stood out on the boat, and you know what He said? Peace be still. 
How many miracles have you seen? I've seen them. Not like Benny Hinn gives them. Hey, Amen. Uh, not like Kenneth Copeland. Buy me a thousand dollar shirt and I'll heal your mother. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. You know how you see miracles? You'll have to wait. They waited. They were waiting. You're not going to see, you're not just going to walk in and just all of a sudden, poof, everything happened. This ain't I dream of Jeannie, you know, living in a little bottle and rubbing the bottle and she poofs out and gives you all your wishes. It ain't not, it don't work like that. You got to wait. Because God wants to see one thing. First of all, do you have any faith? Then are you going to be faithful? That means are you going to just keep on going regardless if it gets worse? I want to say something about troubles. They always get worse. Huh? <laughs> it's the truth. But they do come to an end. See, work, waiting is involved, but also working. They were bailing water. You know, you know why you know why you'll see a miracle? He he only let them see a miracle, those that were involved in the ministry. Huh? Those that got to go up and see the, the little girl get raised from the dead, they were ones that were stuck close to Jesus' side. It wasn't those that was out there in the world. It was those that was working for him. It was those that was involved in the work of God that seen him. See, you, you, you know what the greatest miracle in the world. Do you know what the greatest thing God ever done? He never, he never even mentioned it in the Bible. Did you know that? He never even mentioned it. The greatest thing he ever done was in 1977 when he reached down and saved me in the sins that I was in. As far as I'm concerned, that's the greatest thing he's ever done. And that's the greatest thing. That's a, a miracle. I still can't understand how God can take someone that's religious, someone that's wicked, someone that's out of the way of God, someone that don't believe in God, someone that don't know God, and save them. Right. Under any circumstances. Uh, see, you'll see the miracles, last of all, in who you trust. Who are you trusting? See, they were trusting in Jesus. They didn't, they didn't call the Pope. Yeah, amen. Mm. They went over and got Jesus. I'm saying, hey, Master, you need to wake up. We're going under here. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the, the key thing right there. Who are you trusting in? You think your 401K is going to get you through? I don't think so. This world's fixing to go. It's like those, you ever seen a magician that got those false bottoms in these boxes? That's what we're in in our financial situations right now. It's a false bottom. Don't, don't, don't expect a whole lot. This thing's fixing to go. You, say, you, you said you was going to encourage us, I am. I'm, I'm encouraging you. See the, wake up and see the light. Let me say this last of all. Through all of this, you know what you're going to do? You're going to find out what, a man, what matter a man Jesus really is. But what are you going to do? How will I find out what, it is, what kind of person, what kind of man Jesus is? Because they ask for it. You know what they ask for help? A lot of people in the world, they're not asking for help. They're going over to the shrink. Now, I'm not saying that he can't help people. I don't know that. I don't know nothing about it. I've never been there. You know, the, the name just kind of makes me shrivel up. But I'm not saying. But God can't help them. But I'll tell you who He can help. The one that asks, help me. You know what the psalmist said? Help, Lord. That's what he said. That simple little thing. He said, help me, Lord. You know what you need to see a miracle? You need to say, help me, Lord. Last of all, in closing, the ones that found out was the ones that hung around long enough to find out. So many people bail out on God. You know why? Because of all the stuff prior to what I said. But if you'll hang in there, you know what you'll see? You'll see what kind of person He really is. He's a God that does care. You know what they said about Him? They, we all say it. Don't you care, Lord? You ever said that? Lord, don't you care what I'm going through? I've said it. You all look at me like I'm the only one that said it. I ain't the only one that said it. Lord, don't you care what's going on in my life? He does care. He cares more than your mama. He cares more than your daddy. He cares. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. You take Jesus, you'll have to take Him like He is. You can't change Him. Brother Josh, you come. I'm done. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? 
head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.